Hi, this is Richard Fisk here. Welcome back for another tutorial on the Mavic Air drone. Uh, if you're new to my channel, uh, I do drone videos, reviews and scenic flights, etc. Uh, if you want to learn a lot more about the Mavic Air 2, I've got lots of uh, information down in the descriptions below. If you look in there for my uh, Mavic Air 2 tutorials, I've got 21 videos. Uh, you can binge watch and anything from like how to link the controller to the drone, uh, pro tips for shooting cinematic photography and videos, uh, how to do all the six uh, quick shots, how to go through those, how to do active track, um, about ND filters, uh, when and why, how to use them, etc. Dolly zoom, you get the idea. There's loads. Uh, I've done loads and loads of stuff. So uh, if you want to, uh, if you're new, newbie to the drone industry or drone world, should I say, um, check those out and obviously um, while you're down there subscribe to my channel for more videos hit the like bell um, for the next videos that come out and uh, you'll be notified etc so give it a thumbs up if you can and subscribe um, so first of all going through the drone uh, I'll do that I'll go for the battery uh, we will go for the controller the DJI fly app and then I'll do a field test the reason I'm doing this is because <laughs> on the Facebook groups that I do belong to there's every single day there's like newbie um uh, no disrespect because we're all new at one point but there's new uh, questions um about basic stuff so um it'd be nice for you to go through these videos and uh, and find out what it all means etc so let's run the intro and uh, we'll get into the video Okay, so first up is uh, the drone. If you're getting a new one um, out of the box, as it were, it'll be covered in stickers, so you want to take all the stickers off, don't leave any on. Uh, to unfold um, the arms, you need the top arms unfold forwards like that, very easy, and the bottom arms sort of swing out and, and down, like so. You want to do that fairly gently. Do it in reverse to put it away, so that's quite straightforward. To take the gimbal cover off, you don't leave this on. This is just for traveling and protection when it's in the bag. You take that off when flying, okay? So there's a pressure point here. Uh, you press on that and then click uh, the gimbal cover off. So that's that there. Um, now going around the drone, you've got the camera and the gimbal at the front here. So that's a uh, three axis gimbal. So as you're flying, uh, that gimbal will stay uh, dead straight and still. At the front, you've got two sensors that there. At the back, you've got another two sensors here and here. At the bottom, you've got another two sensors here and here. Don't find that there. Um, there's your sensors. This is infrared sensor that's useful for when you're landing. And this here is an LED light, which is also useful when you're flying at dusk or at nighttime. So you can flick that on um, and see where the drone is. Uh, propellers, if you've got a new drone, they will need to be put on. And if I get my two propellers here, which I prepared earlier, like Blue Beta, you've got propellers that uh, have black and black propeller there, and you've also got one there with a grey ring on it. So they're two different types of, well, the same propellers, but they're two, two different colours on them. So the reason for that is, is that on the drone, the propellers are oppositely linked. So these two are the gray ones, these two are the black ones, and they will rotate uh, opposite. So that will be clockwise and clockwise, this will be anti-clockwise and anti-clockwise. So that means that your drone stays level in flight, it won't flip over. So to put the, the uh, propellers on, all you need to do is a spring mounted. So push in and then give them a twist and they pop off. So you put the gray one with the gray and I'll do the black one as well. And this, this twists off the other way. So one twists on and off, anti-clockwise, etc., and the other one will be opposite. Okay, so that's how you um, did propellers. Going around the rest of the drone, you've got on one side here, you've got a USB uh, port. The, this is for when you want to um, connect to the computer. Uh, that will be doing the, uh, if you want to connect to DJI Assist 2, for instance, if you're checking for updates, um, that's for that. You also, because this has got an internal 8 gig of memory, if you want to take the 8 gig off and put it onto the computer, you need to use the cable for there. So that's that. that's for. The other side of the drone is where you keep the SD card. There's a little slot there. Push in with your finger 
and that will bring the card out. Um, I suggest you get uh, a good right card, good speed, um, because when you're filming on the drone at 4K, 60 frames per second, etc., there's a hell of a bit rate of information going through. And if you haven't got a good card, I'll put a link on the screen now. If you haven't got a good card, you uh, you will suffer. You won't get a good um, playback when you're doing that. Um, so. I think that is everything you need to know about the drone. The battery at the top here, uh, two clicks, press them both in and it clicks in and out and put it back on again, click it into place and uh, yes, yeah, that. Now the other thing you'll need to uh, quite often do is to change the ND filter. Uh, I'll quickly do that. So you hold the uh, filter in your one hand and you twist off and uh, this is anti-clockwise and take it off that way, put it back on again as the same, put it on and turn it clockwise. And that's how you change the ND filter. Um, now if you need any other information in my playlist, I've got all this stuff down in the description, etc. So click on that. Also, while I'm on the subject, if you uh, want to buy anything, um, any extra filters or batteries or uh, SD cards, etc. Things like that, or even a drone. If you look in my links below, I've got kit, uh, uh, mykit.com. Uh, or I've got Amazon affiliate links in there so you can actually purchase on there online you don't pay any extra uh, all that happens is uh, I'll get a little commission so that'd be quite nice for me so uh, if you can do that that'd be helpful and uh, much appreciated right next we have the batteries there's loads and loads and loads of questions about these things um, first of all when you get the new battery if you've got a brand new drone you're gonna need to um, charge it separately individually Okay, so you don't use the uh, three charger hub, just charge it separately. To check how much charge it's got, you press the button once and uh, there's four lights. Each light is 25% um, indicator, so that will let you know how much it's uh, charged to. Charge it up, uh, we'll charge about in about an hour, hour and a half um, to be fully charged. When you press that then all four lights will come on. Um, the flight time is about um, 30 minutes or so, so it's a really good flight time. Uh, plenty of time, especially if you've got the FlyMod combo and you've got three batteries. So you, you've got up to about an hour and a half to fly, which is loads as a newbie, uh, beginner sort of drone pilot. Uh, the other thing to bear in mind is when you first put these on the, the charger, all four lights will come on, then all four lights will go off, and then the lights will come on, depending on what charge it is, uh, and then it'll start flashing. So for instance, if it's a uh, 25%, the one light will come on and then the second light will start flashing. Now also bear in mind is when um, it's fully charged, the all lights will go off. So if you go away and come back and then find that the, all the lights are off, don't worry, it's not, uh, it's not, it's not charged, it's actually fully charged, so uh, you can do that. Once you've um, charged all three batteries, if you've got the uh, FlyMod combo kit, you can then use the hub and charge all three at the same, well, put all three on. Uh, now what it will do is, is <laughs> A question that comes up all the time um, what the because uh, they're intelligent batteries what they'll do is they will um, it'll find the battery with the with the highest um, charge and it will charge that one first um, and then it will do the next one and the next one in sequence the reason for that is so that you effectively get back in flying as quickly as possible so it'll give you the best battery that's fully charged or almost charged it'll charge that one top that one up then you can get out flying while it's doing the other two effectively. Now the other thing to do is, is you want to number your drones, uh, number your batteries. And the reason for that is so you can actually rotate the battery usage. And, and that's important because um, they, they reckon you've got 200 charges per battery as a lifetime of the battery. So um, you don't, you're probably going to get more than that, but you don't want to be using say battery here and have 30 40 50 charges on this one and then only having five or six on this one because you don't know what batteries you're using so if you number them uh, you'll be able to rotate the batteries nicely in the drone while you're flying and you know also what one you're going to use next so if i've got a number one battery in there then i put number two number three then number one etc the other important thing to remember is if one of these batteries goes wrong in the future, it starts swelling or, or whatever, something goes wrong with it, you know that, for instance, say battery number one is not very good. So you use batteries two and three, and then you can buy another one, and you'll discard battery number one, for instance. So that's a really good, useful tip, and that's why a lot of people will be numbering their batteries. Okay, so um, now the other 
important thing is another question that comes up all the time. If you charge your battery uh, up 100%, if you do not use that battery uh, um, within the next day, two days, I think it is, two or three days, if you go back, for instance, and charge it on Monday, come back to the battery and go flying on Wednesday, this battery, because it's an intelligent battery, it will dis self discharge, which means that <laughs> you're going you're gonna to put the battery in and you'll end up at 60% battery, which is what they store at. Uh, okay, so you charge it at 100% on Monday, Wednesday you're at 60%. The batteries also get warm when they're discharged. So that's a really common um, question about batteries. So the best advice to do is charge these batteries in the morning of your flight or charge them the night before your flight um, and therefore they'll stay 100% when you're actually using them. So, so there's your batteries. Okay, next up is the controller. Let's go through the buttons on here. Uh, first of all, you've got at the bottom here, you've got your joystick holders. Um, so they clip in there and store away. So they just um, screw in like that. Also at the bottom here, you've got the USB charging port. Uh, that will plug in uh, to the charger. Also, you uh, plug that into the computer if you've got DJI Assist 2, and that will then uh, check for updates and update the controller separately. Um, you can do the same with the drone, as I mentioned earlier on. So going around the controller, you've got the function button at the top here. Um, you've got options to click once or double click. Um, it's normally set as um, standard to the uh, bring on the LED light that I showed you on the drone earlier. Uh, this button here is your pause button. So as you're flying, if you press that, it will just pause and stop whatever it's doing. Um, if you double press, that uh, instigates the return to home, RTH, uh, and that will then stop whatever the drone's doing. The drone will rise up to the set RTH uh, height that you put in the controller in the, the system in the settings, um, and then it will fly back to the uh, home point that's been registered. Then um, in the middle here, you've got the slider. So you've got these are the three speeds of flight. So on the uh, side here, you've got sport. That's your fast mode where you get somewhere quick. Um, bear in mind when you're in uh, sports mode, there's no uh, obstacle sensors on the drone operating. It dis disables them. In the middle, you've got normal flight mode, um, and that's just general flying around. And then you've got um, tripod or cine mode, which uh, will make everything a lot smoother and slower. So as you're, as you're moving the sticks and the joysticks, um, it will basically react a lot slower. On the other side here, final button on the front, you've got the camera video toggle button. So if you press that once, it will toggle between the camera uh, video mode uh, or the camera photo mode. Uh, so that's there. On the top, you've got your gimbal scroll wheel. So uh, anti-clockwise or clockwise, will scroll, uh, will move the camera on the drone up and down. Um, and bear in mind, if you are using this and you're doing the, the scroll wheel and you go full 100% one way or the other, the same with the joysticks, etc. you are going to affect the drone in that respect. If you do gentle movements and slow movements, the drone will uh, fly smoother and so will the gimbal wheel as well, then the, then the camera will come up slower. So. Bear that in mind when you're, you don't go sort of heavy handed on the joysticks and on the gimbal. Uh, on the other side of this button here, this is your, uh, if it's in photograph mode, you click once and it'll take a photo. When it's in video mode, you click that once, it'll start the video, click it again and it will stop the video. So they're the main controls here. On top here, you've got the uh, aerial. So you pull that out, stick your thumbnail in there, pull that out. This is your, uh, phone holder as well as the aerials as well okay so this is uh, important to keep in, in direction aligned with your uh, drone when you're flying so you want to get uh, the cable off which is the one on the left hand side unravel that cable and then to put the phone in make sure you've got the uh, connector of the phone on the same side um, you want to put it in at the bottom put it in the bottom and then just pull up on the aerial on the, that there and then that will put the phone in and then you just connect your cable to the phone and then you're ready to go so uh, that is the uh, controller yeah. so next we'll go on to the DJI fly app itself and I'll go through that in the settings etc cool 
Right, so whilst your batteries and your controller are charging up, if you haven't done so already, you want to get into um, the Fly app and download that. There's two ways of downloading the app. Um, basically, you can go to Google Play Store and download it from there. Or the better way probably is to go into DJI uh, www.com website and uh, look for the download section and uh, you'll find an APK file which uh, enables you to download for the iOS or for Android and that will put that onto the phone. Um, don't forget to periodically um, obviously check these things because there may be a new update. I believe in the, in the Fly app there is an option now where you can actually put it on automatically search for the new updates and install the new updates so you need to do that first. Right, so next step is before flying, you'll want to probably go into the Fly app now you've downloaded it and adjust some of the settings so that uh, you can do some restrictions on there as a new sort of flyer so you don't get too overwhelmed. Um, so what uh, we'll do now is switch on the controller by double tapping and uh, holding like so. Once you hear that noise, the, the controller's on obviously. Do the same with the drone. That will go through the motions of um, checking the gimbal and the camera for rotation, etc. The propellers will the propellers will move slightly, and then it will make that noise, and then you know it's connected. So then, what you need to do is open up the DJI Fly app on the phone, and we'll go through this and uh, adjust some settings so that uh, it makes it safe to fly. Now, the first. Um, screen you have here if there's any new updates available and uh, you need to put them on the phone that will I don't know if you can see I'll put it on the screen but around about here you'll find the new latest firmware update so if you have anything there that will come up for either for the controller for the drone uh, maybe even the batteries uh, you can tap on that follow the on-screen prompts and it will download the latest firmware now bear in mind as i said you may have something for the drone and maybe something for the uh, the controller if you've got one for the batteries um, you will have to update the other two batteries the one in the drone will be updated when you do the first update and then as you put the other two batteries in they will be updated separately afterwards so don't forget to update the batteries sometimes because they are intelligent um, batteries so now if we click on the bottom uh, right, go fly, that will bring us into our main screen and that's where you'll see the camera view. Um, now we want to set some safety features basically. So on the top right you'll see the three dots, so if you tap on those, so the first thing you want to do is make sure that you set the sensors to break. If they sense anything, it will stop the drone and stop it crashing into it. So as you can see in the obstacle avoidance action, you've got bypass, break or off. Um, so set that to break. If it sees anything, senses anything, it will stop. Um, next, you want to go down to maximum altitude flight. So here you can adjust it as you can see. The legal limit for flying is uh, 400 feet or 120 meters. So you don't really want to go above that. Uh, so maybe we'll set that just to 100 so it doesn't go too high up. The maximum distance is the main one. You can set that to maximum no limit and it can just fly off uh, until lose a signal. If you want to uh, first few flights as a new uh, flyer, new beginner flyer, you want to keep it fairly close. So if you want to set that say, uh, to say about 500 meters or so, you don't want to go in too far. Uh, the main one is this uh, auto RTH altitude. This is RTH's return to home. And this is the uh, height at which when the controller lose signal to the drone or you instigate it by pressing one of the buttons on the controller or on the phone, uh, or tablet screen, uh, the drone will stop what it's doing and it will fly up to this particular RTH height and then it will fly back to the home point set uh, when you took off where the GPS signal was. So you want to bear in mind what's around you, any buildings, high buildings or trees etc and you want to set that RTH accordingly. So uh, normally I have it around about 50-60 meters which is fine. So as long as um, you're about there, depends on the environment obviously, you may have to set that higher but you set that there um, and then as I say if the drone's in trouble and it has a return to home it will rise up and to that altitude and fly back. So that's your main um, main point on that safety feature there. Uh, I won't go into too many other um, things about this because I don't think it's necessary at this point. I've got um, various videos down below of how to um, 
do all these things, return to home functions, etc. Um, the other thing to note is if you do get in any trouble, um, you can um, just release the joysticks. Um, just flying along and then release the joysticks. That will then make sure that the drone hovers in place and it doesn't go anywhere. Then you can regain your composition and you can carry on flying. Um, so I think uh, what we'll do now, I'll go through a couple of more things now. Uh, just so you're a bit au fait with what's, what's there and, um, and then we'll go out for a flight. Okay, so quickly going through a little bit more on the fly app. If you go through uh, the next one on the, on the control, this will allow you to adjust some of the measurements, etc., whether you're imperial or metric. Um, you've got the gimbal mode, follow me or FPV. Uh, normally you leave it in follow mode. FPV is where it'll fix the camera and when the drone's flying, it will tilt the camera as well. It won't stay level. Allow upward gimbal movement. That means that uh, if it's normally set to zero on the horizon, if you leave that on, it will actually allow you to tilt up slightly further above the horizon. Uh, advanced gimbal settings, you can adjust the pitch and the yaw speed and how quickly it stops, how quickly you move the controls and how quickly it'll move. I've done tutorials on this as well below. So again, look at my, uh, my playlist for the tutorials for the uh, two. And it's all in there, all the information, so you can go through that. Um, other things to take into account, let's have a quick look going back on the camera. Um, you've got two um, formats, whether or not you're on Mac or PC. You can change the format to uh, MOV or MP4. I'm Android so, and PC, so I use MP4. On the color, quickly, uh, you've got DCNE Lite, which is a flat, uh, flat film grade. Um, there's more information there, but you need to color grade it afterwards. So uh, if you're not into that or I favor that, then stick it in normal uh, color mode and that will pre-color everything. And it does a pretty good job. I leave mine in DCNE like normally. Uh, code, uh, coding format, normally 264. That's an uh, easy one to do. If you're using 265, you need a computer to, to do that. Uh, your histogram is this indicator here. That's good for uh, uh, over or under exposure meter, basically. So on the left of that, uh, if there's any spikes there, that's your darks. On the right hand side is your lights. Again, I've done videos down below on my playlists all about um, the histogram, about ND filters, etc. and things like that. So uh, yeah, check those out. It'd be, it'd be a lot easier. Um, next on the list of camera grid lines, put them on so that gives you the rule of thirds, etc. White balance, I'd leave at auto just so that it doesn't, um, you, know, you don't have to worry about setting that manually. Um, if you forget your SD card to put in there, again, the drone, as I said before, has got eight gig of uh, internal memory. But when you do, uh, you do want to use that, you can swap between the two. If you put an SD card in, it will prompt you whether or not you want to use the SD card or internal storage. And you can also do that on the app here uh, and change one or the other. Uh, remember to format the card before you use it. Um, so it's, it's all OK. The max video cache, that just means that the video you're getting from the drone will actually store a substandard, uh, it won't be such a great image, but it will store the images and videos on your phone as well, so you can actually um, look at them straight away. Um, on transmission, yeah, leave that on uh, smooth or HD. HD is a high definition. Um, if you don't have so much of a good phone, you know, the capacity and it uses up the CPU, information you want to put it on smooth so it's a less of uh, less quality but you still get the images um, and then on here you've got the information about the the fly app etc and what version you're on um, so you can know you're on the, the latest one to get out of all of this um, you can just press on the screen there so pretty much you've set your return to home you've uh, made sure you're up to date on all your firmware your 1.2.4 whatever version it is the uh, latest one um, and you're pretty much uh, good to go. The, uh, the other thing I need to tell you about um, is on the top uh, right hand side here, you'll need a certain number of satellites uh, in order to take off. So uh, on the, the first one symbol there is the battery. Next to that is the uh, time that you're gonna have uh, remaining on the battery time and flight time. Uh, it's not flying at the moment, so it's set at zero. Uh, next to that is your signal um, strength um, for the transmitter for the controller to the drone 
as you get further away that will drop off um, and if it does drop off significantly that you lose signal it will return the drone will return to home and next to that you've got your sensor indicators they're on at the moment they're working so if I um, if I was to put my hand near there as it's flying they would um, beep at me uh, and next to that you've got satellites um, I think you need 11 or so I think uh, anything above 11 is good so number of satellites that will then pinpoint where it took off from so if you have trouble and you want to hit the return to home it will bring it back to that point if you're flying and uh, anything bad happens uh, you lose the drone I've got a video down in my link again on three tips of how to find your lost drone or crashed drone you can also go into the app and uh, click on here and if you go into the profile and go there you can see the, the fourth one down is find my drone on there you'll find basically the last coordinates of where the drone was um, and it also you can press the button here to start the uh, drone beeping and flashing so that will maybe if you're close by and you can't quite see it um, you'll, you'll hear that press that and it'll maybe locate your drone for you but I've got um, I've got links in the videos below so check those out and uh, you know if worst comes to worst and you do lose it you can help uh, this can help you find it again so um, what we'll do now is I think we'll go into the field and we'll have a first flight and <laughs> try and put all these things together and I'll show you how the controls work and how to fly safely okay so we're out in the field to do a quick uh, flight test all I'm going to do is basically show you how to take off and uh, land there's a couple of ways of doing it and a couple of quick uh, pre-flight checks so um, <coughs> open up the arms etc obviously take the gimbal off gimbal cover off that's important face the drone away from you and on a flat surface um, so you can take off uh, correctly um, switch on the controller first so you double tap and hold that's the controller on. Do the same with the drone. Let that initialize. As before, the uh, gimbal camera will be rotating around, making sure it's clearance, etc. Open up the propellers as well. Makes it easier to take off. Okay. Now, uh, tap on the GoFly app. Now we'll connect. What we're going to do now is wait for the number of satellites to be more. I think it's 11 satellites is a good number. Okay. Okay, takeoff permitted. So the home point has been updated. All right, so do a couple of quick uh, pre flight checks. So touch the three dots, make sure your brakes on. It's under the safety uh, uh, area. Maximum altitude 96 meters, maximum distance 580 meters. Return to home altitude 61 meters. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, check for compass is normal. The IMU is normal, don't need to calibrate anything. So that's uh, your safety checks done, the basic ones. On the left hand side here, you see the up arrow. If you press that, that will bring up a center takeoff. You touch and hold that. That will then arm the propellers. It will take off and it will basically hover there like that. So if I uh, wanted to move it, it will stay close to it. So that's the sensor sensing my hand, so it will make this that pinks my hand to the ground, so that will go up. Right, to land it, all we need to do pull down on the stick and hold it down and then the drone will actually come in and land on the ground. So we'll do that now. Alright, so it's landed. Now another way to take off and uh, land etc is if you bring both the sticks in and down to the middle that will arm the propellers so they're actually armed but it won't do anything until you touch the control so now all we need to do is, is push up on the uh, left stick and that will then take off a bit more 
Okay, so um, what would normally happen now, if you uh, don't hear the sound to say the home point has been updated, you normally wait for that and that will uh, enable the GPS to come back to this point. So to fly on the right hand stick, if you push forward, the drone will fly forward. And if you come back, the drone will fly backwards. If you go left, drone flies left, banks left, and banks right. Can you see the drone? Okay, good. Okay, so that banks left and banks right. So that's that stick movement. So forward, backwards, uh, left and right. On the left hand stick, this is your altitude. So push up, it raises the drone up. Pull down, it lowers the altitude of the drone. And uh, left and right will basically just yaw the drone left and right. So that's going that way. And you can see, hopefully, it's going that way. And that's all, all the sticks do. So, um, so initially all what you want to do is just uh, get in a nice big open area like I am now, I'm on the golf course with hopefully no golfers behind us, um, and then practice flying. You want to uh, just fly around straight backwards or forwards, you want to try and go around in a circle anti-clockwise or clockwise and get the hang of that and then maybe do a figure of eights and things like that. Um, and just practice with a drone. If I, if I take off over that way, let's go further away up here. You won't be able to see the drone. What I'll do is I'll just show you a quick uh, return to home function. So um, two ways of doing it, as I said, you can press this button twice and hold, or you can do it on, uh, on here as well. So let's do this one. Okay, now it says there, return to home, RTH. Now the drone is actually going up and the drone will then face around, come back to me and fly back to me in this direction. So you can see it's doing that now. So at the moment it's going up to the 60 odd meters or so I had it set to. As you can see on the side here, this should go up to 61 meters. Okay, and now it's coming back towards me. So actually 61 meters is well high. But in this area there's no trees or buildings around, so it's now flying back towards me. Uh, if you press on the map, here this will open up the map and you can actually see pinch in you can see what the drone is doing and this is also a nice way of finding out your orientation so you can see where the uh, where we are at the moment the drone is actually that blue circle in the middle and it's turning around and pointing to the h which is the h the home point now at any point if i wanted to it's now descending let's have a quick look at the map close that back down it's now coming down as you can see there, it's now down at 30 meters. If any time I wanted to stop that, I can actually tap that uh, across there and terminate the uh, return to home function. So for instance, if it was coming back and you're landing in a dodgy area, it wasn't very safe uh, level ground, you could tap that and maybe do a hand land and a hand catch. So let's cancel that now. Uh, I have now full control and what I'll do is I'll just do a hand, hand catch. Okay, so all I did there was had my hand underneath and then on the uh, left stick just keep it held down and then when it lands on your hand or on the ground the motors will then shut off automatically. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, hope you've learned something, uh, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on the, the next uh, video and obviously if you've got any comments etc leave them in below and I'll try and answer them as soon as I can. Thanks very much. Okay, so there you are. Hopefully you found this interesting and learned something and you don't feel so nervous about when you're flying for the first time or first few times. Uh, but just remember to take it easy. Don't go too mad. Don't try to fly too far away, too fast, uh, too soon and uh, hit the return to home button if necessary. And uh, um, yeah, happy flying. If you've got any comments, leave them down below. If you want to see any more tutorials like this, uh, please let me know what you need information on and I'll try and help you. And don't forget to subscribe if you like this sort of thing. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next one.